Yeah, I'm Wei Tao Wang, so uh, from Rice University. Today I will present our paper, Spiderman, which is a network monitoring and diagnosis system. So this is a joint work with Crystal Wu from Rice, Professor Praveen Tamanna from IIT Hyderabad, um, Professor Ang Chen from Rice, and my advisor, Professor Eugene Ying from Rice. So, firstly, our observation is that the root causes of the performance problems are unpredictable. The reason is that those problems may happen to a random flow at random places, and a single problem may involve multiple switches across the network. Lastly, those problems may also last for only for a short time and then goes away very quickly. Our second observation is that the root causes of um, performance problems are diverse. Like for those three different features, we can provide three different root causes. To show that problems can be sporadic, the multiple congestion problems may lead to <coughs> a reduced throughput for the victim flow, but their passes are randomly assigned by a network, so who is the victim is unknown. <coughs> to show the problems can be network wild, the ECMP load balancing can lead to a congestion at hop 7, but the actual problematic switch is a switch 0, which could send the, the traffic imbalancedly. Lastly, to show the problems can be transient, a transient loop may exist for a short time, and it may create congestion and may cause packet loss, and it, this transient loop may disappear very quickly. So for the existing solutions, they all fall short in either visibility, overhead, or coverage. For example, the host-based solution monitor and diagnose problems purely on the host, so that they usually lack of in-network information. And for in-network solutions, um, the always-on monitoring system monitors the network at all times, so which is, has a very high cost to collecting and, use, uh, and analyzing all those data. For query-based monitoring system, the network applies a query, and then they install some uh, monitoring features on some of the switches. But this may not be able to cover all the problems because the monitoring scope is predefined. Another common shortage is that those solutions do not provide an efficient closed-loop diagnosis method. So the diagnosis procedure in those works are usually problem-specific, and they collect the data in a high recall and a low precision way, means that they collect many unrelated data. Lastly, they usually incur very high computational complexity, like they have to use nested loops to find out which information are related. Instead, an ideal diagnosis procedure should be extensible and generalizable for all kinds of problems and all kinds of root causes, so that they should collect data in a high recall and also high precision way, so that the comp computational complexity can be reduced because we have much less data. So for that, we introduce Spiderman, which is a, um, a monitoring and diagnosis system with very low overhead. So we will first go through the design of Spiderman, so it includes a design overview and how we detect the problem, how we retrieve the problem, or retrieve the data, and how we analyze the root causes. Then we will introduce some evaluation results for, um, to show Spiderman not only has a better accuracy, they also have less overhead. So in Spiderman, to capture every problem in the network, we have an always on monitor. So Note that this is only a monitor. It monitors every packet on every hops in the data plan. It also maintains some causality information and telemetry data at the same time. But all those data will be only used or collected when necessary. So for example, the causality information is only being used when trying to broadcast or spread the spider packet, which we'll introduce later. So after the monitoring parts, capture a problem, the diagnosis procedure will be triggered. It will first find out the related telemetry data across the whole network by spreading what we call spider packet. 
So every packet, every switch received those spider packet will report their temperature data currently on their uh, on the data stored in the data plane. So after that, the root cause analyzer will try to analyze the collected data and determine the root causes. So firstly, we'll see how the monitoring and pro problem detection works. To capture those problems, Spidermon choose to add an additional header, which, it, which will be used to keep track of the accumulated queuing delay. And when this accumulated queuing delay exceeds a certain threshold, the problem will be triggered. So this trigger, we think, is very good because it's um, fast and has a very high coverage because it runs on data plan and the monitor error packets. And the network overhead is also fixed because every packet only carries the same length of header because um, no matter how long the path is, we only capture the accumulated delay rather than the delay on every hop. So certainly, it can be transparent to host, means that the host will do not do any changes. So the header will be added at the source tour and be, will be removed at the destination tour. Lastly, the threshold is flexible. It can be tuned um, according to different QoS. So after detecting a problem, Spiderman will try to determine the provenance graph for the detected problem. The provenance graph includes all the switches that may cause this, this problem. In our case, the switches on the victim's historical past is considered relevant because the delay can be introduced at one of those hops. And switches that send excessive data and contain with the victims also will be included in the provenance graph. So this method guarantees minimal overhead because only related temperature data will be collected. In this example, the spider packet was generated from switch 4 because switch 4 triggered the problem and the packet will be recirculated and mirrored to generate the first spider packet. This spider packet will be spread out across the, um, according to the two kinds of uh, criteria, like trace back the victim's uh, uh, path and also send to the um, links who send ex excessive data to the uh, container with the victim. And to spread, spread, spread those spider packets, we are uh, using causality information maintaining the switches, which is a, um, a probabilistic data structure. So for example, to trace back the victim's path, we use what we call a timeout bloom filter. A normal bloom filter can only maintain zero or one in the bucket so that they cannot move, remove items from the bloom filter. So the precision will go to very low in the end. But for timeout bloom filter, it can record timestamp every back bucket will be timed out after a certain time. So in this way, we can maintain the um, precision at a very high level. To elaborate on how this timeout room filter works, we give a very simple example. In this example, at the very beginning, all the buckets are T0, which is the timestamp 0. And the red, red rectangular represents the uh, timeout interval. So at time t2, t1, the flow 1 arrives at uh, port 1. So you can see the corresponding bucket are changed into t1. Similarly, the flow 2 coming from uh, port 3 will change the, its corresponding bucket into t2. So after that, if we want to know where does the flow 1 was sent from, we will parse the 5 tuple of flow 1 so that we got the same buckets as before, and we test it every port, we can see that only the port 1 returns true for all the buckets. So that's why we know port 1 is the incoming port for flow 1. To search the related branches who send excessive data, we use what we call purport traffic meter, and you can find more details about this data structure in the paper. So, after the spider packet was sent to multiple switches, those switches will report its maintained telemetry data. This telemetry data is maintained in a circular buffer that will outdate the data that, um, when the time goes by, goes by. And those data includes five tuples, sequence number range, traffic volume, uh, queue depth, flow priority, incoming outgoing ports, 
And also, you can add some customizable data if you want. So after collecting the data from multiple switches, we have a problem, which is the how to align those data. Because the switches clock are not synchronized. And different switches process the same packet at different times because the delay between different switches are different. So that we use a sequence number to align the corresponding epoch. Like on switch one, the related epoch is epoch three because epoch three's um, sequence number range covers the victim packet sequence number, which is 400. Uh, similarly, on um, switch two, the corresponding epoch is epoch two. So in this way, we only retrieve one epoch from every switches, which is the most related to the problem when the problem happens. <clears throat> so after aligning the telemetry data, Spidermon can identify the root causes with a weightful graph. So the first step to construct a weightful graph is to replace the queue with, with, with what information we collected. So we use the traffic volume from the telemetry data to replace the queue. And then we, the second step, we parse the wait for relation. For example, the last flow through packets will wait for the um, eight packet right before it. So that we can see how we update the wait for graph is that we have five F1 packets in front of F3, so it's added by, one, added by five. So similarly for other two flows. So after that, after calculating the um, uh, width for graph, we, um, for each node, which is uh, each flow, we'll calculate a degree. This degree is calculated by incoming urge weight minus the outgoing urge weight. And the larger is the degree, it means that this flow block other flows much more than other flow block itself. So with all the um, flows with positive degree are considered to be potential root causes. <clears throat> so in the, fo um, in the following uh, multiple congestion scenario, we can see that the two flows who send much more data will be recognized as um, 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 root causes very easily because see that degree is very large. So in the last step, we'll try to determine the root causes by leveraging additional information like the flow priority can be used to identify whether this flow coming from a microburst or coming from a high priority. So more details about this part can be found in the paper. For evaluation, we build both a simulator and a hardware switch prototype. The comparison with other alternative solutions is conducted in the simulator on Cloud Lab. So in this multiple microburst scenario, Multiple microburst traffic is generated to contend with the victim flow at different places. For diagnosis, precision means that in all the root causes we found, how many of them are correct. Recall means that among all the real root causes, how many do we recognize? And you can see that Spider-Man achieves the best precision and the best recall because it's collected packets, packet level information, and it also narrowed down the uh, information to be uh, within a very short time interval. For other alternative solutions, like Trumpet can only infer the network condition based on the whole society information because it's a whole society solution. Marker needs time to enable the queries in the network so that it can, be, um, can have some delay. So this delay will let the information to be flushed out already. Pass dump and switch pointer lack of queuing information, so it's not so accurate. NetSight collect error packet information, but the problem is that they reconstruct the packet order. They don't have the order, so that they, it's, it is also not accurate in some cases, but it's still very good, but it's with a very uh, high overhead. So for the complexity of collected data, we use the number of flows times the number of ports involved in the collection as a data complexity. We can see that Spidermon collects the least amount of data and it only selects the because it only selects the related switches. As for switch memory overhead, because Spidermon uses probabilistic data structure, the, in order to maintain a high precision, the more flows we have, the more memory we need to capture those information. But we show that even with a very relatively high 
um, flow concurrency, the switch memory usage is still affordable. To summarize, we propose a Spider-Man, which is a low overhead, high accuracy, closed loop monitoring and diagnosis system. It achieves network wide always on monitoring, trigger based selective information collection, and an efficient and generalizable diagnosis procedure. With all those designs, Spider-Man achieves a more accurate root cause analysis with less overhead. I think this concludes my talk. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.